Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the fourth video in a five-part series on a Way 3D into Flash Builder. And last time we actually uh, told you there's some videos that you needed to watch to bring you up to the speed on what a class was. We discussed classes uh, somewhat. We then put a package into Flash Builder and began to manipulate it so we could turn it into action script that can be used inside of Flash Builder, which meant that we removed the signature. And this time we're actually going to do a few other things. We're going to uh, actually remove the constructor function and use a creation complete handler to actually bring that uh, to get that program operating and we're going to add a sprite container and we're going to clean up any errors that we might find along the way and uh, everything should work fine now right now all this is available on my google code so just go to this address right here uh, lively3d.googlecode.com force us files flash flash away 3d inter dot zip you can download that and import that into Flash Builder, and we'll show you how to do that. And then uh, in the fifth video, what we're going to actually do is we're actually going to modify this program and show you actually to work with, and show you how to work with a Way 3D on a deeper level. So let's get started. Let's start with the initiation method. Right here, here is my constructor method that I mentioned earlier. And I no longer am going to use that because, look, it has no decoration right there. No type is declared in a constructor. So if I try to run that in, uh, in FlexBuilder, that's just going to, you know, give me an error. So I'm going to get rid of this entire statement, but I want to keep that INIT because that's going to initiate my program. So if you look at it, I'm going to delete this, but look at the next step. Here's my INIT method. I'm going to keep that. And what that does is it initiates the, the engine, initiates the creation of the objects, and initiates the listeners. And if you've worked with Paper Vision a lot, you typically set things up like this. And so Paper Vision is typically set up like this as well, where you're initiating different objects. And this basically modulizes your code and, and makes it more understandable. Let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and run this at the creation of the program. So what you want to do is go up to the application tag. So what I want to do is I want to, in a sense, after my program has been created, I want to run that initiation function that declares all those different, the engine, the, uh, the setup, the listeners. And so what I do is I just want to make a space here and hit that space bar. When you hit that space bar, all your code hitting comes up. And I'm going to start with C-E-A-R. Creation complete is what I want, so let's double click on that. And now I'm going to auto-generate the code that I need. So I'm going to click on that. And there's been auto-generated the uh, application stub. So when creation complete happens, it runs the application complete method. I can actually roll over with and hold down the control key, click to that, and it takes me to where that code is in the application. I'm going to go ahead and put my initiation function there. INIT, and so what will happen is that will be initiated now when the method runs. I'm actually going to cut and paste that and put it higher up in the program so I know what's happening. So that's actually one of the first things I want to see in the program is that initiation after I've declared my import statements and my properties. So right after that, let's go ahead and hit V to paste that. So in the application tag, you see that we have our creation complete. So when the program, in a sense, is created, and upon that completion, it runs the initiation function right here. Which runs the, uh, which in a sense initiates the engine, creates the objects, and creates the listeners. Okay, we've got our creation complete handler, which starts our program up, but we have a problem. And you can see in the program what's actually happening is that we keep referring to the stage. And that works in Flash, but it doesn't work in Flash Builder. So what we're going to do is come up with an alternative to that, and that's the system manager. So we're going to come to the import statements, and we're going to import the system manager and use that instead of the stage. So let's put my import in. I have it in my uh, clipboard, so I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it. And we'll paste that. And that's the system manager. And what I want to do now is use my control F click to replace all my stages. So I'm going to come along here, hit control F, and wherever I see a space stage dot, I want to replace that with system manager dot stage dot. And let's do a replace all. And what that has done is gone through the entire program and replaced uh, that reference to stage with system manager dot stage. Now you got to be careful with this sometimes. Notice I put a space in front of it because I knew, knew there were places where I didn't want it to replace the name stage because that we're actually using function names. But when I put a space in front of it, that actually kept me from doing that. So you have to be careful sometimes what we place because when you're doing lots of, uh, 
uh, replacements, you may have names that are parts of functions and actually names you don't want to replace. And so this actually did it for me. Now I have another problem, and that is my add child. In Flash, I can add child right to the uh, stage with no problem. Just use the add child. But in Flash Builder, I got to put it somewhere. And now with the new Spark architecture, I've actually got to put that into a sprite container. So let's actually bring that sprite container in. So let's go all the way to the bottom of our program. And under the decorations tag, we'll put in a lesson sign S and start using some uh, code hinting. We'll say sprite container of some type. There it is, sprite visual container or sprite visual element. Double click on that. I need to give it a name, so I'll call it ID and I'll call it my sprite. And then I'll close that tag. And now I want to add basically the add child to this sprite element just using the my sprite. ID. So I come along here and wherever I see add child, I'll go ahead and put that in. So now I'm just going to put an add child, basically sprite.addchild, sprite.addchild, and so it adds it all to my sprite container. And my program should be looking pretty good at this point. Let's go ahead and save and see if we have any errors. Save it. And we have an error popping up here. And once again, you're going to see it's that move problem. Now, here's an issue that has actually popped up. I actually know there's nothing wrong with that actually variable. Uh, per se in Flash. Move should be fine, but the problem is in Flash Builder there's an identical reference to move, so I can't use that name move, and this pops up every once in a while, and it's, it can be puzzling. And so what we want to do is take this name move and change it to another name like my move. So I'm going to highlight it, hit Control F, and just for move, just replace all reference of move with my move, okay? And just replace everything, and now that part of the program is good. But see, we're too liberal at it. Because at the end here, we see we gotta, we just don't want to replace this move because it's supposed to re remove statement. So let's get rid of that my move, and we got remove. So be careful when you use that Control F key. Uh, it, it's great, but sometimes you can replace too much. And this was one instance where we did. Uh, let's go ahead and save this and see if our error goes away. And it did. And our program should be pretty much close to running. So in the final stages of cleaning up our program, and I've got a problem, it won't run, I have an error. And when I roll over this system manager, it's not highlighting. That code should highlight when I hold down the control key, you see. So what's wrong? It's spelled wrong. Look at this. I spelled it system manager. So we want to change that, and we'll use our control F trick. So that's control F. And we're going to go up to the top of the program and replace all of those. So when I say system manager, I'll change it to system manager there you go let's replace all good now everything should be working fine so I believe we've cleaned up all the errors and so when we run the program it should run no problem and there it is but it's in a white background so let's change the background to black so the way you do that this is you put a space in your applications tag let's hit the tab start getting some of that code hinting background color and we'll use a hex 0x123456 let's save that program and run it and there's our application with the background. Isn't that pretty cool? So what we're going to do next time is we're going to take this application and we're going to tell you about how it works and we're going to show you how to modify it to go to the next level with Away 3D. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.